Uh, so I'm Roy, uh, I'm uh, uh, from Israel. I work uh, for uh, Istra Research. Uh, we're in algo trading. And uh, today I'll talk about uh, types, concepts, and uh, specialization or different ways to write template libraries, basically. Um, this is a uh, you know, very welcoming uh, forum. Please uh, feel free to stop me at any time and ask questions. I will not be looking at the chat. So uh, please, you can just talk uh, into me uh, or uh, if uh, in Bar and Adi can help uh, facilitating the chat, it will be very, very helpful. So let's uh, dive in. Uh, so first, let's talk a little bit about the uh, concepts in C20. It's uh, one of the largest features of the language. And uh, we'll start off by, uh, uh, by seeing a, a little uh, clip from Alexander Stepanov's uh, class from 2014, where even then concepts were used to some extent. So hopefully the video will work. concepts that we've used in all of our code and these all defines to type name I and mean, it's just documentation today maybe at some point there will be a way in the language to express this okay so as you can see even in 2014 in this uh, class by alexander stepanov the guy who wrote stl they didn't have concepts but they used the header file con concepts.h and just used defined to uh, convert various names of uh, what they would use as concepts into type names so just a the, the compilers didn't know anything about it for the compilers it was all type names, but even as early as then, concepts were around in people's minds when they wrote template libraries. And if, if we go even earlier to uh, 2013, here's the Bjarne Strasstrup also telling uh, the Alexander Stepanov's class in A9 a little bit about uh, what concepts are, or what he believed concepts should be seven years ago. So, Concepts are fundamental. Yeah, the metro have to represent uh, fundamental concept of application. Uh, Alex has been saying this for at least 15 years, but most people have to go Okay, so the honest trust would tell us it's fundamental, even seven years from now. Uh, it took took it a long time to get here, but uh, it's good that, we, that, it's, that it's here now, so we can use it. Oh, sorry. So, um, so what, what are concepts? Why are they uh, uh, so important? What, uh, how can we live? Uh, how could we live without them? So basically, concepts are related to uh, templates and template metaprogramming. You probably all know this. Uh, templates are a way to create uh, or write a single algorithm uh, for many, many different types. Here is the uh, min algorithm that takes two uh, uh, objects and returns the minimal one. It's quite clear. And uh, using, using templates, you can uh, uh, perform the same algorithm across many, many types, either numbers, integers, uh, strings, et cetera, et cetera. Metaprogramming allows us to write algorithms or different algorithms over types and do many more things. So here's an example of a, a, um, like a, some type of a metaprogramming trick called the uh, uh, specialization, where uh, I, I write uh, two different algorithms with the same name, swap, okay, and uh, I, I choose to have uh, uh, the swap algorithm for uh, general type T uh, be implemented differently than a swap algorithm for an array uh, of type T2 uh, of, of size N, okay? So uh, the general swap uh, basically does a swap of, uh, of items. If I were to run it on an array, I would get maybe a shallow copy in, instead of a deep copy. And this second swap does a deep copy. And uh, this metaprogramming trick allows the compiler to choose the correct algorithm with the same name to different types. Okay, so uh, and sometimes it's not uh, about choosing different algorithms uh, that have uh, different functionality. It's just choosing uh, different algorithms because they have a better performance or better traits. Okay, so in this example, for example, it, it looks very, very uh, uh, messy, but if you bear with me, you'll see that uh, this is a sort of an, an implementation inside STL of the STD fill algorithm that basically tries to fill a sequence with the same uh, object over and over again. The default implementation would just do a for loop. And here, uh, the STL implementer chose a trick called enable if in order to specialize and create a specific uh, uh, implementation for byte values that uh, directly calls memset. Okay, so if uh, uh, the STL implementer didn't do this trick, it was up to the compiler to look at the, maybe a for loop and uh, convert it into memset or something like that. 
at the template metaprogramming and, and this enable if truth allows the library implementer to force the compiler to choose a specific algorithm that is maybe the same in terms of functionality, but different in terms of uh, other properties. Okay, so this was like a basic uh, inf understanding or, or introduction to why we want to do metaprogramming and why we want to write different implementations to the same algorithms. And in, the, in this uh, uh, talk, uh, I'll try to uh, give you a little bit of an overview of the various ways that these were, this thing was done before uh, C++20 and how uh, C++20 concepts help us do things uh, maybe a little better, maybe a little cleaner. Okay, I will uh, tell you a lot about uh, what I think of things, uh, also a little bit of uh, facts, but uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you uh, know more than me, that, so please feel free to, uh, to teach us, feel free to, to stop me and ask questions and, uh, and uh, give uh, your own uh, ideas and tips. Um, I will tell you a little bit about things that I don't like in the language, and uh, you'll, you're obviously welcome to uh, agree or disagree. Uh, I'll show you some stuff uh, from STL, and uh, as I've done so far, also we look together at a few YouTube clips from great uh, uh, lectures in the past, and you will also obviously welcome to uh, look at these clips uh, uh, for a longer time uh, later on. Okay, so let's get back to early 2013. To be honest, Rostrup will tell us, in his words, what concepts are, or at least what he envisioned them to be, uh, seven years ago. And the thing we were working on is it becomes a bunch of constant expressions. It becomes a bunch of Boolean expressions. Does this type have this property? Does the cardinal type have this property? Has the combination of types we get as arguments got this property? It's all predicates. It's all Boolean algebra. Um, there's nothing about scopes, nothing about objects, nothing about uh, indirect jump tables. It's all Boolean expressions. Okay, so it's all Boolean expressions. That's what the structure tells us. Um, con if we think of concepts, we might as well think of Boolean expressions. And if we, oh, I'm sorry, if we uh, ask uh, him a little more, uh, what are they good for? When, when should we use concepts? He also tells us a little bit of information. You can overload if it meets the sets of constraints from one and not the other. That's the story. If it meets, if they are subsets of each other, then it will take the one you, uh, the, the biggest one it can. In, in other words, if you are more specific, well, the one that has that, that meets the, the largest number of the predicate. Okay, so this also uh, uh, makes sense. Uh, concepts are used for overloading. Concepts are used uh, as a way for uh, the compiler to decide which of several uh, alternatives is used in different places. Okay, we have predicates. We sometimes have a different, a different number of predicates for different uh, algorithms or different alternatives. And the compiler will choose the one where we have the largest number of uh, uh, predicates. So let's, let's see if this is... So uh, let's leave uh, uh, Bjorn alone and leave uh, 2013 alone. And, uh, look a little bit uh, uh, more at what uh, uh, cppreference.com tells us about uh, the concepts uh, library. These are the very first uh, uh, paragraphs in the introduction of C++ concepts. And uh, it's a long paragraph, but what I would want uh, to focus about is that uh, right here, even at the start, uh, CPP reference tells us that concepts are both syntactic and semantic in nature. So, uh, and uh, although the compiler mostly looks at the uh, syntactic part of the syntax, uh, when we think of concepts, we need to, to remember that there are also semantics related to, him, to them. And if uh, a semantic requirement is not met at the point of use, meaning if I go and have a concept that doesn't meet the semantic requirements, then the program is ill-formed, no diagnostics requirement, meaning this is undefined behavior, and uh, there's no guarantee as to what will happen. So if we try to force a concept that doesn't meet uh, requirements uh, on the compiler and the compiler uh, accepts it, it doesn't mean that it will uh, work uh, in a good way for us. Usually it won't. Okay, great. Uh, so basically, just to summarize uh, this uh, uh, small introduction, concepts are mainly three things. There are a bunch of Boolean expressions, as, as Strasbourg told us. Uh, 
we use them in order to uh, choose the overload that meets the largest number of predicates. Okay, so if we have several uh, uh, overloads, several alternatives that the compiler needs to choose, uh, each one of them has its predicates. The one that uh, is both true and has the largest number is the best one to, to pick. And every concept has, is not just syntax, it's also semantics. Great. So now, uh, throughout uh, mostly the rest of this talk, we'll go one by one on, into these three uh, different, uh, you know, traits of the uh, concepts. So Boolean expressions. How are Boolean expressions uh, uh, defined uh, for a concept? So this is the most uh, the, one, one of the basic ways to create a concept. We just uh, we can define a concept on a on a single class T um, by saying that it is equal to some other Boolean uh, value. So is integral V is a Boolean value that they uh, had in C++ in C++ 11, maybe even earlier. And uh, this way I just create a concept out of it. Very, very simple, very uh, naive. If you want to go uh, into a little larger level of complexity, I can use Boolean expressions, okay? So a concept can be defined as a Boolean expression of other uh, concepts and of other Booleans that's another way to create a concept. So I can create concepts uh, with, with any arbitrary Boolean expression as complicated as I want. And the third and newest, and maybe most uh, uh, interesting way to create concepts is using what's called a requires expression. Okay, and a requires expression, you see it looks like a code block. This is code that won't re actually be executed, but it will be uh, um, checked for correctness and check if it's, uh, um, if it's legal uh, C++ and the requires expression will be true if the code inside it is legal or not. You can write uh, multiple uh, statements in here and each statement needs to be uh, legal in the language. You can also uh, uh, use the arrow operator to indicate uh, the return types that you would like uh, uh, the, the expression to, uh, to be evaluated to uh, be equal to. Um, I should also say, by the way, that a concept doesn't have to be defined on a single layer class. You can also create a concept uh, on various uh, classes and the relationship between them. I think we might see some examples of that uh, later on. So these are the basic ways for us to create concepts, uh, create our Boolean expressions uh, in C++20. Okay. Before C++20, we didn't have concepts, but we did have Boolean expressions, of course, even on types. Okay. It was, we already had the type traits, as we saw before. Uh, we could uh, use uh, the uh, a Boolean constant uh, part of the library that uh, signifies uh, true or false. And we could also uh, use uh, uh, things like uh, inline uh, context per Boolean uh, variables uh, in, as ways to basically convert uh, types into Booleans. Okay. There were other ways um, like Boolean operators is also something that's uh, legal and part of the language. Here's the definition of uh, is scalar. It's a type trait, and we can see that it's basically um, a Boolean expression of other traits uh, of each other. Okay, so even before uh, concepts, it was pretty common to have uh, uh, ways to convert types into Booleans. Okay, and we use them uh, in many ways, either uh, through uh, Boolean expressions or through direct uh, uh, definition. Um, there were also uh, uh, ways to be even as expressive as the requires clause, but those were more complicated. Um, and that's uh, where many people first uh, hear, hear about this uh, acronym called SFINE, substitution failure is not an error. And this uh, uh, very, very complicated uh, clause basically tries to uh, define uh, whether a type uh, is, has a, a method called meow or not. Okay, so this uh, long thing will uh, become true type or true for every type that has a meow method, and it will be false for every other type. So this is all very complicated, but it's possible. So it allows us to define to has meow. Uh, so this was all possible before C20. And uh, uh, so basically every type, every attempt to create a Boolean out of a, a, a type was, was possible even before C20, but with the required expressions, it's much easier. Um, there are also things that uh, uh, we used before C20 that aren't really relevant for concepts. Uh, most and foremost, uh, we're talking about specialization. Okay, this uh, is an example of uh, partial specialization, where uh, I want uh, to convert every type that is constant into true and every type that is non constant into false. Okay, so here I use a template specialization in order to create this uh, mapping. So is const maps to either true or false based on whether T is constant or not. 
And uh, another uh, way of using specialization is for opt-in or opt-out. Okay, so here's an example um, where I can define a, a Boolean for every type, which I define it to default is false. Okay, and anyone, anyone who wants, has a different type and wants to uh, opt-in or turn it into true, they can do specialization and convert the Boolean to be true for their specific uh, type. Okay. Um, this is a, all was very, very common and useful, uh, you know, for in C++ before C++ 20, and it's still useful now. But uh, please remember that concepts themselves cannot be specialized. You cannot do concept specialization. It doesn't really matter, though, if you uh, design your concept uh, uh, to, to deal with it, because as we saw before, a concept can be defined as a composition of Booleans, and the Booleans themselves that are not concepts, they can be specialized by themselves. Okay, another uh, way, by the way, that people used in order to convert uh, temp types into Booleans and do predicates uh, was uh, using uh, uh, various traits and traits objects. It was mainly used for grouping. So, for example, if I have a class uh, called the temperature, which is uh, uh, numeric, I can, uh, uh, I'm, I'm allowed to specialize and implement uh, numeric limits for my temperature and define various uh, uh, Boolean and also not Boolean uh, traits uh, for my class. That, that was another way in which uh, the library, the SDL library, uh, allowed us to configure uh, uh, various, uh, I guess, uh, uh, attributes about our own types and, uh, and define what is true and what is false uh, for our types. OK, so that basically uh, covers uh, the whole notion of uh, trying to convert types and maybe groups of types into Boolean expressions, the way that the concepts do them. This might be uh, a good time to uh, stop a little bit and uh, see if uh, people have any questions. So uh, are there any? No. The, the last thing you described, if I'm not mistaken, is also known as a customization point, right? Uh, well, it's, I think, I think so. Uh, the, the, there are, I guess, uh, yes, there are customization points that are more uh, specific into uh, and describe uh, just writing a specific uh, function, like a swap function or, uh, um, or, or other specific functions. The traits uh, are even like are a little broader, I think. They let me define various attributes for, for my classes. So, by the way, I think I saw in the chat that you did not uh, have audio for my videos. Is that right for YouTube? Or did you get audio relatively fine? It took some time, but it reached us. OK, cool. So I'm sorry about that. Um, OK, so now let's uh, move on to talk a little bit about uh, um, various overloads and how uh, we can tell uh, the compiler and tell the language which of uh, several alternatives is the best one to use uh, for uh, different uh, uses. OK? Um, so basically, uh, with concepts, it's uh, quite easy. We use uh, what's called a requires clause. Uh, it's a little bit uh, confusing. Requires expressions is what we saw before uh, for defining what uh, is, is true and false for a concept. Requires clause is, uh, has, uses the same uh, keyword, but it's in a different place. This is what we put inside the, or right after a function de uh, definition or, uh, or declaration or uh, in a class or, or variable declaration in order to constrain it, to, <clears throat> to put some constraint into where I want the uh, um, this uh, specific declaration to be uh, valid for or what I want it to be valid for. Actually, uh, if we can do these types of uh, constraints, not just uh, with a requires clause, there are two uh, other alternatives. You can use uh, uh, auto uh, and the name of a concept uh, as well, but I won't dig deep into that. You can uh, look at some good videos uh, uh, explaining the different uh, alternative ways to uh, constrain uh, uh, algorithms and, and classes and objects based on the uh, concepts. And anyway, as we mentioned, the most specialized version is, is the one that wins. The standard uh, gives a little bit of details of how, what does it mean to win. Like Strasoup said that uh, if you have uh, as many uh, Boolean expressions, you're correct, but it's actually more, uh, uh, more nuanced and more details. Uh, there's things like uh, if you know uh, what the CNF and the <clears throat> DNF uh, uh, representations for Boolean expressions means, that's uh, one of the things that, that needs to be done. The compiler basically tries to normalize uh, various constraints in order to uh, have to be to do sort of like a fair comparison. And if uh, once the uh, two sets of constraints are normalized, then it can go and uh, look and see which one of them has more uh, uh, 
more true uh, uh, expressions and it will be the one that wins. Okay, it requires clauses and the concept uh, overall resolution is finite friendly, which means that uh, if I have uh, uh, something inside my requires clause or something inside the um, inside the, one of the alternatives which just doesn't compile, it doesn't uh, break the compilation, it just uh, uh, removes that uh, specific uh, alternative and other alternatives will be uh, chosen instead if, if there are any. Um, the two maybe most co commonly talked about in the, um, and discussed the strong points for concepts is the fact that they have uh, better error messages than most of the other alternatives that we had so far. So in case uh, the resolution fails and the compiler doesn't know which alternative to choose, uh, the error messages for concepts are considered uh, better and nicer than error messages that we used to have with other template meta metaprogramming tricks. And compilation speed is also considered uh, faster than other template metaprogramming tricks. <clears throat> okay, uh, so that's uh, uh, the way to constrain things uh, in C++ 20. Let's talk a little bit about how uh, things were before. Okay, so this is uh, Timur Dumler in September telling us about the world before concepts. Let's remember, let's remember if we, uh, let's see if we can remember how to, um, how to use the enabler. Okay, so you can write the std enable if uh, integral type and floating point type. Where do we put this? This is something that I can, I can never remember, right? So you can put, put this onto the return type of the function, but then you don't really see the actual return type anymore, so that's not great. You can put this into the parameter list, but then you don't really see the parameter list anymore. So I don't like either of these. Um, so my favorite method is actually to put this into the template argument because then you can still cleanly see the function signature. Um, so that's, I think, the most readable way of doing this, except it doesn't work um, because it turns out that uh, in C++, defaulted uh, template arguments are not part of the function signature. And then you again have the same function signature twice, and then you again get this error redefinition of function template. Turns out you can work around that because that rule doesn't apply to non-type template parameters, so you can make this an int uh, template parameter. Okay, I hope uh, this wasn't uh, too much because for me it was too much. And basically, uh, uh, this uh, old clip was meant to uh, try and remind you that things were possible before C++ 20, but very very complicated. In that example, Timur tried to create uh, two uh, alternative for the same function, one for floating point and one for integral, and showed how very, very complex uh, uh, things were. There were very various alternatives to do it, and many of them were very hard to remember. Let's uh, talk a little bit about a few more alternatives that existed before C20 and try to see which of them uh, might be still relevant today, and we might want to choose and use uh, even now that we have concepts uh, in our tool belt. So one uh, uh, common alternative uh, is specialization. Okay, we, we saw this example uh, earlier on. We can have uh, two different uh, functions that have different uh, uh, template uh, arguments, different uh, uh, types, and uh, the compiler knows to choose the most specialized uh, uh, alternative uh, in case uh, there, in, in case of uh, uh, potential collision or in case of, uh, of issues. Um, as you mentioned, this is not uh, possible for, for concepts, but for concepts, we do something else. Um, another uh, way to customize things. Well, uh, Roy, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. You can't, I'm not sure, but it seems that you can't really do that with concepts anyway, because the N is shared between two separate arguments. And even if you will ask, is sw this swap needs to take uh, an array of size N, you can't compare this end to the other end. Um, hmm. No, I think, I'm not sure. I think it might be possible. I think uh, if we put a uh, requires clause uh, in here, I think we might be able to, um, well, oh, you know, you know what, it's tricky. I might need, you might need, you're right. You might need to be templated on a type T as well as T2 and N. And the requires clause will need to tell us that uh, T is an array of uh, type T and N or something like that. You're, you're right that it might be tricky. But again, even in C20, we're not losing uh, the ability to specialize, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so the second uh, alternative uh, that I wanted to show you uh, is, is a little different. It's a, uh, uh, a customization argument. Okay, so here a max element algorithm is templated on a, a compare 
uh, a type, okay? And it has a default, which is std colon colon s. But uh, if you want, you can uh, uh, go and, uh, and call max element templated on a different comparator. You can, that way you can uh, choose a specific implementation that you like. You, you don't really change the algorithm itself, but you give the algorithm some uh, a tool and some customization point actually uh, that it can uh, consult with at runtime or even in compile time, it will know the type and, uh, and slightly uh, uh, do things differently. So that's another way uh, of in having our code uh, interact with the, the standard library or with any template library um, by using these uh, customization arguments that we can pass on. Um, uh, this way, um, as you mentioned, the, uh, the, diff the callers can also choose uh, and call max element uh, several times inside their code with the exact same uh, iterator types, but different uh, comparators. Um, this is special because uh, it gives a, um, it doesn't bind the algorithm with the type directly like uh, concepts does and specialization does. It gives a, the, the caller a way to, to have multiple bindings in the same uh, code. I think we might talk a, a, a bit, a little bit about that later on as well. Um, and then another uh, more complicated uh, and more powerful way uh, um, to go into that is uh, uh, using uh, customization points, um, which are much, much uh, uh, a much more larger topic. I think it was uh, discussed uh, uh, even uh, in this uh, meetup in the past. And there's a link to uh, a tag invoke method, uh, which is uh, becoming uh, quite a a you know, powerful way to uh, really allow library writers to interact with uh, the library users and let them uh, customize various points, uh, various uh, pieces of the algorithms that uh, they run. Uh, and the last uh, uh, alternative, last way that I want to show you related to uh, overload resolution and choosing different algorithms is uh, uh, what's called tag dispatch. And that's uh, the classic way that the STL usually does um, its own choice between uh, uh, algorithms. Tag dispatch basically uh, means that uh, um, if I want to run, run my template argument on a specific type, I know that the type can be one of several categories, okay, and I can uh, implement my functions such that uh, they uh, that they run differently or have different implementations for different for different categories. Okay, so in this example, for example, we, uh, we can see the advanced uh, algorithm from STL which takes an uh, iterator and wants to move uh, uh, n steps forward. And the implementation uh, calls the same, uh, uh, like an internal implementation uh, function with a different, with an extra argument, which is the iterator category of the iterator. Uh, the SDL defines a set of uh, several iterator categories. Those are much like uh, uh, concepts uh, defined in the, in the library. And uh, whatever, uh, iterator I pass into the advanced function better have an iterator traits uh, specialization and an iterator category definition uh, in order to allow uh, the library to choose correctly uh, which, how to implement uh, or which uh, type of advance to perform, okay? In this specific uh, case, by the way, uh, you probably know that uh, some iterators uh, are random access and can jump uh, n steps uh, in one uh, operation with using something like a plus equals operator and other iterators uh, are not random access. And if I want to move uh, n steps forward, I need to uh, call uh, the plus plus operator n times. So this, uh, this is the way this is implemented. Okay, in SDL itself, this uh, method of dispatch is, is hidden. It's, as you can see, it's inside the, the underscore underscore advanced function. And, uh, there is no way for uh, the user of, uh, of advance to specify their own iterator category if they like. So if I have a random access iterator and I want to advance it for some reason, n steps, by calling a plus plus n times, I cannot do it. I, I'm not allowed to call, I cannot call advance and pass this in this extra argument. And I'm not allowed to call underscore underscore advance. But technically other template libraries can choose to make this, uh, to expose this to the users themselves with, with a default value. So there's nothing uh, that uh, prevents a template uh, uh, library implementer, uh, someone that, a library that is a DSTL, to uh, use this uh, tag dispatch mechanism with a good default, uh, but will also, in a way that also allows uh, the caller to, to go and uh, override the good default with something else. Okay, so one uh, example of where this can be useful, for example, is different sorting algorithms. Okay, I don't know if you uh, 
uh, I've seen uh, Andrew Alex Andres, who has uh, several talks about uh, the performance of sorting algorithms. And it's interesting to see that although uh, we all learned that uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, the optimal complexity for sorting is uh, n log n, and quick sort is a good way to uh, do uh, 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 sorting, there are various cases, various edge cases where actually insertion sort, which is has a very bad uh, worst time complexity, is better. Okay, now STL itself basically implements various types of sorts, but doesn't really give us the ability to choose uh, very easily which one to uh, which one it, it uses. We just call sort on two uh, uh, iterators, and the STL itself uses things like tag dispatch and other mechanisms to choose by itself which specific algorithm to use. Uh, one could uh, expose this uh, uh, category or this uh, uh, this tag dispatch uh, into to user land if they want uh, to allow uh, more flexibility to their users. So this is sort of like a summary of the different uh, ways that I talked about. It was really quick, but uh, I hope uh, uh, you get uh, some uh, idea about the fact that there are many ways to customize. They're subtle, but uh, uh, but different. And many times uh, you won't really need uh, uh, to choose between all of them. You can see that the first three are very, very similar. Okay, These are the like template specialization, enable if, or sfine, and requires clauses for C20. All of them basically um, allow a library implementer to choose uh, either on off whether a specific uh, a function or algorithm uh, is allowed or not allowed for certain types, or to choose from a few uh, implementations. If a library has several implementations, the, the library implement, implementer can use specialization or requires clauses or enable if to uh, specify which of the different implementations is going to be used for, for different classes or different types provided by whoever uses the library. Okay, uh, specialization is quite simple. Requires clauses in C++ 20 are quite simple, and uh, enable if is not so simple. Um, the, the last three methods are are different. Um, tag dispatch, as we mentioned, is something that uh, basically lets the application, whoever uses the library, uh, to choose what what to do. Okay, so if I write my own iterator, I can choose the iterator category for my for my uh, container. Okay, so and I can, I need to choose whether my iterator is random access, forward iterator, bidirectional, et cetera. And based on, on my choice, I, I put the tag on my uh, objects and the library uses that to understand how to run and whether to run different uh, algorithms on it. So this is medium simplicity, but it gives more power to the caller. Um, custom arguments can actually give more, give you more power because I can actually um, use a different custom argument in different places inside my code um, and run the same algorithm with the same types, but with maybe different uh, instantiation or different uh, uh, code for, for uh, you know, for like a comparator uh, or things uh, like that. So it's also quite simple, but uh, it mixes the uh, runtime and the uh, and compile time to, to some extent. And the nebloids or uh, uh, tag dispatch methods are relatively um, more complex, uh, but they, they also allow uh, the application uh, to choose how it interacts with the uh, with the library, so the library gives certain customization points or nibloids inside uh, uh, its own algorithms, and the application has the uh, way to choose uh, whether it wants to participate in the algorithms, and if so, how. So that's uh, basically different ways for library authors to let uh, applications or, or to choose different uh, implement implementations uh, for the way they are used, either. Uh, they can choose it for the for their users, or let the users choose it for themselves. Okay, so I think this is another uh, uh, reasonable point to uh, stop for uh, questions. Uh, I'll be happy uh, if anyone has a, you know, anything to to add or anything uh, to comment. Okay. Just curious if uh, anyone is actually using concepts regularly already. Haha, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, you know, in preparation for this talk, I uh, I used concepts a little bit, uh, but uh, sadly, uh, uh, my workplace is still on CPP 17. But uh, does anyone use concepts here? I think not all GCA compilers support full, full support of concept, or a lot of the C++ uh, uh, adding. I think also some of them doesn't support format. Also, yeah, I guess you're right. Like, uh, some bugs exist, but uh, 
optimistic, like some bugs exist. Um, but I, I would mention that uh, just uh, just a comment regarding the uh, conjunction and disjunction uh, signal. So uh, it also recommended to use uh, std conjunction disjunction because uh, because it's lazy evaluation to like could um, instead of evaluating uh, all the all the all the um, yeah, all the different uh, Boolean uh, yeah all the different conditions. So you could uh, yes. Yeah, so, so that's also I think it's interesting, and I also uh, I also researched that a bit. I, I also had to talk about it. I don't know if you're aware, but so um, so there's also um, there's also interesting differences uh, where you between the different uh, evaluations, uh, between like uh, the different uh, uh, forms of using the required. So I think it's very interesting. I think like, I think it's, I think it's a still uh, developing, in a way it's a still developing feature. So, so that's awesome. Like, uh, and yeah. Uh, and yeah. I just want to I just want to finish and, and say that I really like this uh, this table because I, I think it's I, I, I like I like the overview so uh, so thank you that's that's awesome thanks sure, great uh, I have a question that's kind of related to several of the other things people said here is how much of the standard library is already conceptified I mean um, I know there was talk about doing it. I don't know if anyone, I don't mean what concepts, pre-baked concepts are provided by the library. I'm asking how much of the existing uh, standard library was actually changed to these concepts, if, if anything oh. at all. I think almost zero in C plus 20. I think uh, as far as I remember, uh, there's the ranges library in C plus 20, which uses concepts quite heavily and has requires clauses. But as far as I know, mo most of the, the pre-existing algorithms, pre-existing code, uh, nothing uh, in, in terms of concepts and requires clauses was uh, added to it. I, I might be wrong, but I, I don't know if it's uh, uh, just for lack of time or if there are other reasons where it won't uh, change, I'm not sure. It might be, but yeah. Are the concepts part of this, like the specification? Because you, let's say you add a standard library function that uses Fine, and now they said, look, we can remove 90% of the, the typed code and get exactly the same behavior using concept. Would that be a standard breaking API change? Yeah, unfortunately, I think that uh, in many cases it is. Uh, simply because, uh, as we've seen, uh, sometimes uh, in order to do Spina, I need to add an extra uh, argument with a default value or an extra template argument, et cetera, et cetera. And that changes the whole name mangling. So I think that that's a problem. Um, you know, it's, it's actually very sad because these are all, templates are usually header only, right? And when you're doing header only, it should be very easy to recompile usually. Uh, but still, as far as I know, it's tricky stuff. Uh, Adi, you want not only uh, API 11 problem, you want also API 20 problem. Yeah, you know, I, I'm thinking, um, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> yeah. so um, unless I would... like, you want to say from, like you, they did in Python from Python 7 to uh, Python 3, we no longer backward compatible, we like, did a major modification to the language, you, it's a problem. That's basically what happened in 11. Yeah. And by the way, uh, actually, there's another thing that I really haven't thought about. Even in just in C20, if I have the same uh, function with the same arguments and different requires clauses, then just it has to have different uh, name angling, right? So the requires clause have to somehow, you know, uh, uh, Know, present itself in, in inside the mangled name in in, in the, uh, you know this the inside the shared objects etc. So um, I, I'm afraid the ABI is uh, still an issue. 
Yeah. Wait, so uh, Amir just linked to something that I, I was thinking about. Maybe the library implementation, he linked us to, in the chat to a, a Stack Overflow answer or a question and answer. And they say that the standard deliberately avoids using any particular te technology to achieve uh, uh, specifying some constraints on the, the technology which constrains the types. So that actually seems to hint that you might be able to change uh, some of the standard library functions to use concepts because, um, and it's kind of an implementation detail and not really uh, specified by, by the library API. And if you all, if you had like a template equals uh, enable if stuff, everybody knows, everyone knows that you're not supposed to stick anything in there. If you did, it would probably not compile anyway, even with the old code. So, and so maybe, I don't know, it's, it's actually no, a I, good question. Yeah, I it's think it's implementation right. detail. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. But, but then we, we go and, and see, uh, maybe like uh, other commented before, that uh, even if it's allowed, uh, sometimes the compiler uh, vendors will upgrade and keep uh, backward compatibility for binaries uh, just uh, to be on the safe side. I think there's an example later on in this talk. So, um, if there are any more questions, this is a good time, or let me move on to semantics. Okay, semantics, I think, is a, a, another very um, not so much discussed, but really interesting, I think, uh, part of, uh, uh, of uh, concepts. And first of all, because semantics are tricky, are tricky things. Okay, trying to uh, understand the, the relationship between syntax and, and semantics is, is very, very tricky. And these are two uh, examples uh, where semantics and syntax uh, can vary even inside the, the standard C++ uh, language, and they obviously way before C++20, mm -hmm. and uh, where you know big, large minds and large committees came, went and, and thought about things. So these are two examples where syntax and the semantics uh, collide. I don't know if you've uh, heard of these two. So first of all, is trivial equivalent of std pair int int? Okay, so my question is, this is a, like, this is a Boolean expression, right? This is a predicate. And the question is, is this true or false? And uh, probably remember, std pair is just a, a struct with two uh, with, with two uh, members. std pair of, of two ints. It's just a struct of two ints. And is that thing uh, trivially copyable or not? I think and, it uh, has a private base class. Yeah. So and, yeah, the sad fact is that uh, it is not uh, trivially copyable. And the reason is just because uh, a mistake in the uh, definition, uh, one might think that it probably, maybe it was not so easy to, uh, to define a STD pair uh, in terms of syntax uh, to, be, uh, to be trivially copyable before uh, C++ uh, 11 or even 14. Okay, so, and, and for that reasons, uh, the, 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 the syntax uh, requirements were not met. Let me, try and explain this uh, slower and, and, and more clearly. Uh, is trivially copyable uh, talks about syntax, but actually, uh, or about semantics, whether something can be copied using a, a mem copy, et cetera, but its definition in the standard is, is not uh, related to, uh, to, the to the semantics, but more to the syntax itself. And the, uh, the definition of is trivially copyable basically talks about uh, are the constructors uh, uh, Trivial? Are the destructors trivial? Do I have a, a non trivial uh, op assignment operator, et cetera, et cetera? And the definition of this uh, uh, Boolean will be true or false based on these uh, syntactic uh, traits of my class and not about, not, not related to the semantics of is it uh, allowed or is it legal? Or are there any problems with doing a mem copy? And for that reason, an STD pair in C 98 had to have an uh, uh, equal operator that is not trivial. And it, the reason that it had to have it was not because of uh, these types. It's because a pair wanted to also support a reference type. So a pair of int reference and int had to have a, a, a non-default operator equals. For that reason, even through a C++ 20, std pair has a non-trivial operator equals or assignment operator. And the, for that reason, uh, it doesn't meet the syntactic constraints of is trivially copyable. And, uh, we can, and no one in the library, no one can, can, uh, can just do a mem copy uh, unless the pair and uh, feel and, and stay on safe ground. And you might uh, uh, know or think or 
might be aware that this can be a real performance issue with the uh, uh, associative containers, because it's quite common for associative containers to use pairs of the key values in various places. And if uh, the associative container wants to do some reallocations like hash maps, et cetera, then the reallocations uh, uh, have to go and, and perform the uh, either move uh, operator or copy operator uh, or assignment one by one, and it's, it's not allowed to do a mem copy. And the second example uh, about where semantics and syntax uh, can go wrong is- and, uh, that, but By the way, the even sadder part seems to be that uh, it's the same for tuple, even though it was introduced in C++ 11. Yes, that's true. So it's all very, very uh, sad indeed. Um, uh, another thing that relates to uh, semantics and the uh, and the and syntax is the the method the size for std list. Okay, so all containers uh, in STL has a size method, and all of them uh, at some point we, we decided that we want the size method to be a, a, of constant time complexity. Unfortunately, um, until C++11, it was uh, uh, legal for the std list uh, size operator to be a linear time complexity. Okay, and uh, there are many places in the code, uh, especially places uh, uh, things that were written uh, without thinking about uh, it too much, assume that uh, if, a, if a container has a size method, it's very, very cheap to call it the size method. But for list, it's, it wasn't the case in C++11. And if you're using GCC, please check your defines uh, in, in, when you when you perform your compilations, because many many default uh, GCC implementations still have a, a, a list implementation that uh, does a linear time uh, uh, size, just because of ABI compatibility or uh, the, the fear of breaking ABI. Although, as you mentioned, the the standard allows them to break, but they don't want uh, to to not be binary compatible with the older code and with pre-compiled libraries. So, uh, if you use GCC. Please uh, uh, check whether your uh, size uh, method for lists is linear time or constant time. Um, and uh, one uh, uh, way, uh, one one place where we actually see this uh, issue really to a uh, to a hard effect is in C plus twenty when there is a concept called sized range. And what's a sized range? A sized range is a is basically a range that has a size uh, uh, method. But that's the, the those are the syntactic uh, requirements of a, of our sized range. Okay, it needs to have a size method. And if you look at the semantics definition of this uh, concept, you uh, you learn that uh, the semantic definition is this type T must uh, must implement uh, the size method, and it has to be constant time complexity. Okay, so and if I try to give uh, uh, or try to use a container with linear time complexity as a, a as a size range, this is actually undefined behavior, and this is bad. And uh, the STL implementers understood that uh, this can be a tricky thing, and they didn't want the compiler to uh, to treat uh, any container that has a size uh, operator as if it's a size range. So they actually went ahead and implemented a very, very specific and very, very special escape hatch called disable sized range. Okay, so disable sized range is, is not a concept; it's a context per boolean. Okay, it's, it has its default is false, and every every time you implement a container, if you decide or whatever class you want, if you decide to make it a range and you decide uh, uh, to implement a size method, if you can uh, go ahead and specialize this boolean and change it to true to basically tell the STL library that uh, I do, I do not uh, consider this to be a, a size range probably because my size uh, method is not a constant time. This is really really tricky stuff really uh, strange. And I personally also think that the fact that uh, this Boolean is not uh, mentioned in any way in, in the concept uh, declaration, and it's just a uh, part of the documentation is also a little bit uh, uh, confusing, I guess. And another uh, type of uh, uh, escape patch that exists in the uh, C++ 20 standard is, uh, uh, is one that is not opt out, but opt in. This is enabled borrow range. I don't know if you've heard of that. But again, a borrowed range is a concept uh, that uh, has some various uh, syntactic uh, uh, requirements. And it also has a semantic requirement. So in this semantic requirement defaults to false. Okay, and whoever implements uh, their range, if uh, they think that their range is borrowed or it can be used as a borrowed range, they have to proactively go and opt in. They have to proactively go and specialize enable borrowed range to, be, uh, to become true. Okay, and basically we can see here 
that, uh, um, that many times uh, when people, or even in the SDL, go and implement their own concepts, they understand that uh, semantics matter. And sometimes only syntax isn't enough. And they want to give uh, uh, the users in the application some way to customize, some ways to specialize. Because concepts themselves cannot be specialized, we have to go in and bring uh, the concept expert Boolean friends from C++14 uh, and, and pull them into to our concepts in order to give some uh, escape patches and some ways for the applications to tell us as a library writer uh, whether I can or cannot use specific concepts for specific types, OK? Um, I don't really have much time, so I want to uh, go through this video from Herb Sutter, where he also tell us a little bit about the uh, uh, semantics of uh, concepts. Let me skip this I have, and show you this one last uh, uh, example, which is uh, uh, all, again related to semantics. And this one is, uh, is a concept inside the standard called the equivalence relation. And it, the interesting thing here, I think we uh, touched it also uh, in the show and tell part of an earlier uh, uh, meetup, is that the, the concept called the equivalence relation is actually exactly equal to, the, to another concept called the STD relation. And in terms of, of syntax, those are exactly, exactly the same. And even the notes say, say that, that the only distinction between these two are, is, is semantic, okay? So if I have uh, two algorithms, for example, and I want to constrain them, one by, uh, for ex equivalence relation and the other for relation, obviously I cannot do it because uh, the compiler will not have any way to, uh, um, to choose between the two. Um, moreover, um, uh, if, if I have, if I have uh, a function that I want to constrain, not uh, just to specific to equivalence relations and not to anything else, and I want the compiler to, to shout at me if I give it uh, another relation, there, I have no way uh, to do it. And I personally think that it's a little bit of a shame uh, that uh, they didn't add uh, some sort of like escape patch in here to allow uh, people who write their own relations to uh, specify whether it is an equivalence relation or not. Um, in order to uh, allow the compiler to uh, better choose how to use their uh, uh, relations uh, inside the library. And uh, when I uh, researched this topic a little bit, I tried, I went on uh, uh, Slack and asked some experts about this thing and why uh, didn't they put uh, an equivalence uh, in, uh, like an escape at you in a way for people to opt in or opt out with their own relations. And one interesting uh, answer that I received had to do with the fact that relations are usually, or many times, uh, actually implemented not as classes, but as lambdas, okay? So many times, like a relation, like an equivalence relation is sort of like a comparator, right? It's something that I can, that I can uh, use to, to compare uh, um, different uh, values. I can use it uh, uh, for, for equality and inequality, et cetera. And uh, many times it's just a lambda. And uh, the question is, how would someone opt in uh, to a concept if they have a lambda? How could, could one uh, write a lambda and have that lambda opt into a concept or not? How, is there a way or will I need have a way to write a lambda that actually belongs to a concept versus doesn't belong from a semantic point of view? Can't you do like a decal type star this to identify the type of your lambda and then specialize that inside your lambda body and kind of make it known yeah, so to the world? Yeah, so it's tricky part, but I did try to write something that, that uh, works. And here's what I did. I tried, for example, in here to, to define a concept called critical code and have a function called the uh, run with privileges that will run this uh, a critical operation. And I would like uh, the compiler to uh, uh, not allow me to run with privileges on some, an operation that is not critical code, for example. Okay, and now I want to, inside my main function, I want to run it with some lambda. So I want some way to uh, sort of like do a mark critical, to, to, to tell the compiler, hey, I know that this is critical, so please allow it to compile. And if I don't write it down, if I don't write mark critical, just try to pass in a lambda, or either through some, some which and any other way, I would want the compiler to stop me and tell me that, uh, hey, this is not legal. Uh, you, you can only run uh, with privileges if your uh, operation is of a specific concept. And happily, I actually, uh, managed to uh, implement this uh, mark critical uh, function in some way. I used the same trick uh, that's uh, used in uh, a class called overloaded, which uh, some of you might know. So basically, I'll go through this uh, very, very quickly. Um, so I used, uh, again, a context for Boolean called critical code V, which defaults to false. And then I specialized it uh, to be true 
for anything that they derived from a critical code tag. Okay, so any class that is that derives from critical code tag is a considered critical code V and everything else is false. The concept will be equal to the critical code V. And here's the mark critical. Mark critical basically is templated on the, the Lambda and the, or, or any other callable object and the derives from it. But it also derives from the critical code semantic tag. Okay, so, uh, yeah, sorry, I have a typo here. This is the critical code tag, is the same as here. Um, and I, as I uh, derive from things, I uh, also uh, uh, you know, expose the operator parents uh, of uh, the Lambda itself. I uh, add a deduction guide in case I need it. And this basically uh, allows uh, the code uh, here to uh, compile. And there's a Goldberg link if you like uh, to look uh, later on when you look at the slides. So that's uh, a little bit uh, uh, of uh, how to you know, attach semantics uh, even to lambdas. And you can also attach semantics to any class that you like uh, this uh, way. Um, so and we're, this is the, my last uh, slide coming into a summary. Um, so thank you, obviously, uh, for your time. I hope uh, uh, this was enlightening. Um, the, your main takeaway should be that the concepts are great. Um, uh, if the fact that uh, I, I believe that the uh, requires clauses and constraining your functions, it will be very, very uh, common and maybe much more common than writing concepts. It will be, I think it's very uh, easy to use requires clauses with any Boolean expression. You don't have to use concepts. And I you know, encourage you to do that. As you mentioned, the fact that concepts cannot be specialized is, tr is tricky. So many times it, it can be even uh, beneficial to use requires with just Booleans. Um, if you're writing a library, I would encourage you to give your users power. Okay, give them uh, escape hatches to tell you whether the types uh, belong or not, do not belong to a concept. Um, consider giving uh, call site customizations where they can, uh, you know, specific, uh, specifically customize things not uh, for the entire type but just for a specific uh, call site. And then uh, talking about the Silverbus standard, I think that uh, doing concept, concept specialization is something that should be considered. I don't really know why uh, everything uh, that uh, is, you know starts with a template uh, type name T can be specialized except for uh, concepts. You know, uh, using declarations can be uh, specialized. Uh, um, uh, var variable templates, variable classes, everything can be specialized, but not concepts. And uh, uh, another thing uh, that has to do with uh, is trivially uh, uh, copyable, by the way, is that type trace themselves, although they are not concepts, they are classes, um, it, it's also undefined behavior and not allowed to be spec to, for type trace to be specialized as well, um, which means that even though I know, for example, that my own class or std pair of int int can be safely mem copied, it's not allowed in the standard for anyone to go and just uh, do a specialization and uh, tell the compiler, hey, I know what I'm doing, forget about the syntax, I know my semantics, so please uh, make uh, this type trait uh, true for my class. But this is all very, very tricky, so I don't, I don't think the standard will change in any of these ways, but just wanted to share my uh, uh, thoughts anyway. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, again, uh, I'll be very happy to uh, hear your comments and uh, uh, learn together with you uh, new things. Uh, 